Okay, now we could do this in a variety of different ways. But just to make it nice and accessible for us, I want to consider this. If I gave you, say, this binomial expansion, I've just chosen it because we can do it relatively easily by hand. Okay? Now, what is this equal to? Well, we actually know this result well enough, and you probably know the row of Packle's triangle well enough, that you could just actually help me expand this out manually, right? What would the first term usually be? Yeah, we usually write it as a cubed. Uh, and then the next one, think about the row that we're on. What's the next one going to be? It'll be 3. Uh, what term am I going to lump with it? a squared b probably. And then we would say, what's the next one? It's 1, 3, another 3. Another 3, right? Uh, how many a's, how many b's? Yeah, a, b squared. And then the very last term will be? b cubed. Very good. OK. now. What, is, what does any of this have to do with this? Well, if you actually tease this out a little bit, right? We've actually, particularly in here, we've actually um, taken some things here and just sort of compressed them together to write them for the sake of efficiency, right? For example, a cubed, what it really is is a times a times a. Do you agree with that? That's, that's what a cubed is short for. Same deal with b cubed. Okay, but in here, why have I got three of each one. Well, there's more than one way to write these guys, right? Like, there's only one way to write a cubed, a, a, a. But you could write this, for example, in the order that it's written. You could write it a, a, b. But you could tell me another way to write that with the same pronumerals, but in a different order, right? How would I write it? Yeah, you could write it as a, b, a. There's another way to do it. Yeah, you could do b, a, a, right? But you see, we sort of compress these all into one thing because in multiplication, in multiplication, <clears throat> order does not matter. Do you remember that? Right? We, we have a name for this. We say multiplication is commutative. You can just rearrange these guys to be whatever you want, and they're all the same thing. Do you agree? Right? What about this one over here? How could you write it? Well, you could write it the way that it's written, which is A, B, B. But you could write it differently. You could write it as B, A, B. Or you could write it as, OK? So you can see what you're doing here, right? <laughs> yeah, however you want to read these out loud, right? What you are doing in, in this thing here is you are doing permutations and combinations. But in the context of algebra, you don't really need to worry about them being different. You just say, well, I end up with three of them. So you write three. And we focus on the three, right? But this, I uh, need one more color. These things here. Uh, I mean, we're going to have these ones as well. These are the binomial coefficients because of what you are doing, right? You could say this. You could tell the story. We've talked about telling the story in different ways. Um, you can tell the story in a number of ways to explain why this should give you this, right? For example, do you notice every single one of the terms here? There's actually um, there's eight terms that I've written in green. Do you see there are eight terms? But they collapse down into four when I collect like terms, right? Those eight terms, each time they have three pronumerals. Do you notice that? There's, there's going to be, you've got to choose three, right? And that should make sense because this guy here is a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. You've got to choose three every time, right? When we say three, choose zero, it's a little bit like, well, you've got three here. Choose some of them to be b's, right? How many of it are we going to choose them to be b's in this case? Well, I don't want any b's for this one. Okay, For this line here, or this set, I've got three spots. One, two, three. Choose one of those spots. Three, choose one. Choose one of those spots to become a B. Right? How many ways can you do that? And the answer is three ways. Over, can, you, can you finish where I'm going here? There are three spots. Choose two of them to be Bs. There are three spots. Choose all three of them to be Bs. There's only one way that you can do that, because they're all Bs. Okay? Does this make sense? So in fact, we've been doing perms and comms sort of Underneath. That's why we sort of introduced this notation a year ago, but didn't explain what it was about, okay? Because we had to wait until now. So, this 5p3 business, think about this, and maybe you want to write this down as a note for you because it starts to rapidly become confusing as you meet questions where there's not an exercise and it tells you exactly which one you're supposed to do. 5p3 is about permutations, that's why it's a p, and that means order matters, okay? 5c3 is with combinations. That's why this topic is called permutations and combinations. When you combine things, their order doesn't matter.
if you ever forget, if you ever forget, put it into your calculator. And your calculator will give you a much larger number for one of them as compared to the other. So here is 5p3, right? 5p3 is a huge number because you've got to consider all of the orders changing your actual arrangement, right? But then 5c3 will give you a dramatically smaller number. What is it, by the way? 5c3? Can you read 5c3 off of here? Remember, these are all identical when you don't worry about order. These are all identical. So how many rows are there? There are 10. 5c3 is, of course, 60 divided by 6, which gives you the 10. It's a small number because when order doesn't matter, a whole bunch of those options end up being identical. So you don't count them, if that makes sense.